Has he been better to you than you've been to yourself? Some of us has been pretty rough on ourselves. Jesus has been better to us than we've been to ourselves tonight. He's been better to us than we have some of us to our spouses and our family members. Jesus has been better to us tonight. He's worthy of all praise. I was considering, thank you, as this sister was given that testimony a few minutes ago, you could feel the spirit wanting to change the atmosphere in the service, wanting to change. And having those you got to know and recognize and be sensitive to what's going on. And not just be thinking about what we're going to eat after church or who we're going to go or who we're going to call when we get home or who done us wrong or who done us right. we got to get our minds on Jesus tonight. He's on the sign. He's on the building. The words are on the sign. But we got to get moving in the arrangements tonight. And we can really get the help for the Adam that we need from the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. I need the Lord. Yeah, amen. amen. You might not need him tonight, but I need Jesus. Amen. I need him worse than a dead man needs a casket. I need him worse than shoes need socks. I need him worse than anything tonight. More than I need food, more than I need water to drink, more than I need a roof over my head, more than I need gas in that car that's almost four dollars a gallon. I need Jesus to move in my life tonight, saints. I need the Lord to move in my life. Nobody else may feel like they need him tonight, but I've got to have him. I'm desperate for the Lord. Hallelujah. Our families and our people need our help. And the only way we can help them. Is to get a hold of God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. I hear so much. We hear so many things going on. But if we'll lay our burdens down. I'm going to sing another verse or two of that song. Just steal it from them. Right in the house of God. If we can lay our burdens down. We'll feel better. If we can lay our differences down. We'll feel better. If we can lay our hatred and our, our, our strife and our envy and little things that we feel like nobody knows about that we keep hitting in the closets of our heart. If we can lay them things down, Sister Clinton, tonight, Jesus will let us feel better. He'll let health spring up. Amen. In our lives. Hallelujah. Like a fountain. Hallelujah. Will I feel better? Say it with me tonight as we get ready to go to work. So much better. Since I live.
give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He'll let you feel better tonight. Amen. Do you know that man? They call King Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. A lot of people's confused and don't know what his name is. But his name tonight is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. Demons tremble. The Bible said the devils believe in one God. Hello. I said the devils believe in one God. And they shake. They tremble about it. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't believe in one God, man, the devil's better off than you are. Amen. I want to be better off than the devil, don't you? I want to believe in one God. And not just tremble at it, but you know what the devils can't do? They can't submit to the word of God. Yes. The devil knows the Bible. He knows the scripture. But he cannot submit to the word of God. Yes. This flesh cannot submit to the word of God. The spirit in us has to submit to the word of God. My flesh wants to do everything but submit to God. You may not want me to come back after tonight, but I'm just glad I made up my mind. I'm going to let go and talk to you. Amen. We don't want to submit to the will of God, to the word. We say, Lord, if it's your will, if it's your will. You know what the will of God is tonight? The will of God is the word of God. The will of God is the word of God. It's his will that you be blessed tonight. It's His will that you be healed tonight. Somebody said, well, if it's His will, I'll be healed. It's His will for you to be healed tonight. When He went to Calvary, the first strap they laid on His back, amen, proved forever that it was His will to heal me and you tonight when we get sick. If we don't, it's still His will. If our family members don't get saved, He's still a saint. If our children don't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, He's still the Holy Ghost baptized. And somebody's going to receive the promise of God. I want to receive it tonight, don't you? I don't want to just hear about the call about somebody somewhere else getting the blessing of God in their life. I want to experience that for myself. And it's His will. It's His good pleasure to give us the kingdom. I said the kingdom. Not the scraps off the table. Not just the crumbs. They sing about them cr crumbs. I love that song. But I'm not just wanting crumbs tonight. I've had the crumbs. I've had the drippings off the grease pan. I need the meat of the Word of God. I'm here to tell you tonight we're going to have to get something down and underneath the collarbone of our lives if we're going to stand in this hour. It's going to take Jesus on the inside. It's going to take picture on the wall, not just somebody grandma told us about, but it's going to take the very fire of God inside of us for us to stand in this hour. Amen, saints of God. I made up my mind just a few weeks ago. Amen. Come what may, come what will, come what go, I don't care. I've got to plant my feet. We've got to plant our feet tonight. And say, I'm not going to be shaken. Because how many of us were in a shaking time? The Bible said that there would come a time that would try every man's work. Like this by fire. If you're praying tonight, I want to encourage you, keep on praying. If you're fasting tonight, I want to encourage you, keep on doing that that you're doing for God. If you're believing for your loved ones to be born again of the water and the spirit according to the word of God who is Jesus tonight, keep on believing for that because he said it's for you, your children, your children's children, as many as are afar off. Amen. I was afar off alienated from God. Amen. It's for as many as the Lord shall call tonight. It's his good pleasure to give us everything in this book that he said we could have. Amen. And Jesus will do whatever it takes 
to sustain his people. In the book of Daniel, I appreciate the privilege to be here tonight. We work today, forgive me for uh, being a little late. We worked today, came home, and called some customers for tomorrow, scheduled a route, changed clothes, and took off. And I told her as we pulled in, go buy your tissue. I said, I believe, I feel like we might have made the trip from Elizabeth to Johnson City in the fastest time that's ever been recorded. <laughs> Nobody was recording it, but I felt like it was the case. Looked at the clock, I'm telling you, when we passed Walmart and Elizabeth, and I believe it was, I feel like it was 6.58. <laughs> we pulled in here on two wheels at about 7.03 or something. I said, I don't know how we done it. Coming through and looking at them clouds, and I was thinking, Lord, translate us, transport us, do something. She said, I hate to be late. I said, man, I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> Amen, when the saints come dragging in. But we're here tonight. All just aside. Some of our people are going to come in at the 11th hour. Some of our loved ones that you felt like couldn't be saved. That you felt like had left and wouldn't come back. They're going to come in at the 11th hour. If God made you a promise. I was reading today in the scriptures and meditating on the word of God. If God ever spoke to you. That word will not fall to the ground. It will come to pass. Amen. If it was really the Holy Ghost that spoke that, it's just as much as if it was written in Scripture. Amen. Somebody said it was written in red. They just started writing the words in red, the words of Jesus in red about a hundred years ago. Amen. That's pretty much a new thing. Everything from in the beginning to amen is going to come to pass. Amen. amen. And the things that apply to our lives are going to come to pass in our lives. Can you say amen? you got to believe that. we got to hold to that. Because how many knows what we're in right now? It's not just a warfare in the flesh realm. It's not just a warfare and a battle in the natural realm. How many knows the Bible said there would come a time men's hearts would fail them for fear? Amen. Men are falling over dead right now looking at the things that are coming to pass on this world. Amen. The whole world is shaking. It's the easiest time. I was telling her coming down the road. It's the easiest time right now. Anybody that knows anything about the Word of God ought to be able to preach right now. It's an easy time to preach because so much is taken. Place. Right. And nobody seems to know what to do. She had a dream. Sister Aaron had a dream the other night about electric cars that they was driving in. Some about electric vehicles. And I heard today that the vice president said something about needing to go to all electric cars. I mean, knows God knows what he's doing. Gas is getting so high we can't afford it. The man I work for said today, he said, I don't know what we're going to do. We can't afford it. We can't hardly afford to run the routes that we have to run to put fuel in the vehicles to run the routes. We're not making enough overhead to pay for the fuel, let alone pay the employees, are they? That's where we're at. You think about the truck drivers and the condition. All, and we have the oil, we have the reserves here. But tied up so much in politics that we can't use them. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk politics tonight. But this is where we're at. They say be real. I'm being real with you. When you go to that gas pump, it's real. Four dollars a gallon's real. Amen. When people ain't even hardly making enough to survive. But we're coming into something. We're stepping into a time. We we are changing. When they change vehicle models in a factory, they have to change the templates. And the patterns that they use for those models into a new model. And we're in right now, the Bible said, that which is in part. Amen. We're, we've operated in that which is in part, but that which is imperfect is coming. But we're kind of in limbo right now. We ain't even operating in that which is in part. And we sure ain't operating in that which is in fullness. Amen. We're kind of in that limbo, that changing out. We Everybody knows something's going on. Uh, we know something's taking place. Everybody's got a different idea, but I'm telling you, the word of God, amen, is founded and it's settled in heaven. Amen. Heaven's not shaking. The angels aren't shaking. Nobody's wringing their hands in heaven. Amen. The word of God's coming to pass exactly like it's supposed to. Amen. Me and you may not see it. We may think everything's falling apart, but everything's actually falling together. I said everything's falling together. 
Amen. We wonder why. I'm not saying this is why, but we wonder sometimes in every case, we, we wonder sometimes why so many of our precious loved ones are leaving out of here. Amen. I'm telling you, if we can see what we're stepping into, what's out ahead, we'd say, Lord, I thank you for calling our saints home. For calling my grandma and some of our people on out of here. Hallelujah. That they don't have to go through some of this stuff. Amen. But I'm telling you, God is doing something in the people in the midst of this. And a lot of it's outside the walls of the church. Actually, most of it's outside the walls of what we call the church. Because COVID-19, if it's taught us anything, it's taught us that as a people, amen, we might not have been walking in what we thought we were walking in. Amen, because it shook us up. It shook families up. It shook churches up. Some churches closed the doors and ain't opened them back yet. Amen, I had a tent in Alabama, and there was a pastor of a, of a Pentecostal church. He said, can I borrow your tent? He said, we want to have services in that tent. We don't want to have them in the church. And that man wound up leaving the walks of this life before we ever got to do that. Amen, so many people have left out of here, but we're still here. And it's not by accident that you're still alive tonight. We're in a time if you're alive, if you've got blood flowing in your veins and a heart beating under your chest bone, amen, you're blessed just to be alive in this hour. Because people younger than me, younger than you, Brother Adam, and different ones, uh, Sister Aaron and, and Brother Phil, so good to see him tonight. But so many people are leaving out of this life. But we're still here. I made up my mind a while back. As long as I'm here, I'm going to try to give everything I can to Jesus. I'm going to try to do everything I can to spin and be spent for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because that's all we got to hold on to is Jesus. And tonight, if you know Him, you're blessed. You're so blessed. Daniel chapter 11. We'll read some familiar scripture to you. I try not to hold you too long, but I'm fired up tonight. I'm fired up tonight. We spoke here a couple weeks ago about the Ark of the Covenant that was stolen from God's people and taken into the lands of the Philistines and carried about into different cities and how the, the judgments of God and the, 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 the anger of God was kindled because that holy thing of God's people was stolen and taken into the cities of the Philistines and set up beside of idol gods and all different kind of things. But when it came back, when it was sent back, it looked totally different than it was when it was stolen. I'm telling you, I believe our lost people are coming in. And some of them are coming in different than what it was when they went out. But we're going to have to love them anyway. Hello. We're going to have to love them, whatever they got on, whatever they wrapped up in, whatever they're tangled up in. When they come down the aisle, come to the altar, we're going to have to love them anyway. Yeah. I said anyway, we're going to have to love them just the same. Yeah. Amen. We've got this thing that if we can't see it with our eye, we don't believe it. But we're going to have to believe it anyway. Yeah. That God is getting ready to move in our midst. Amen. Right in spite of the greatest evil this earth has ever known. We're in an evil day. Yeah. We're in a wicked day. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Women don't know what to do. Men don't know what to do. Children are out of control. Yeah. Devices have replaced altars. Yeah. Devices have took over our lives. Yeah. Electronic devices have captivated our minds. And the word of God isn't precious anymore to some people. But God is getting ready to do something through all these things and make a turnaround. God showed me, he showed me through the spirit here a while back. There was getting ready to be a mass exodus away from a lot of this stuff. He said, what are you talking about? I'm talking about all our, our social media and all our stuff. And I'm on it. I, I'm not telling you, I'm not on it. But it's a hindrance to our prayer life. It's drawing people away. The things we can see with our eyes. The image the image. Don't you know this thing that's coming is going to have an image. The Bible talked about the image of the beast. He's going to have an image. There's going to be something that's so captivating about the devil. Something so captivating about the man of sin. 
that if you didn't really have your eyes on Jesus and Jesus only and nothing else besides him, you'd be lured away by that. We've got to get our eyes single. I've got to get my eyes single again. Amen. 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 We've got to, saints. We're headed into something we've never been in before. It's not just going to be gas prices. It's more than that. It's more than that. You can't only, when in a time it's hard to pray, you can't only pray. Seem like. You can't only get a prayer through, seem like. Used to be a time, I remember, we'd come home from work with our lunchbox. Brother Adam and I'd get out of my truck. I had a Ford Ranger in the 90s. And I'd work at a, at a stone quarry where they mined stone rock to take and sell to do building and mason work. And I'd get out of my truck with my lunchbox and get out of it and look to my door and start walking through my yard and throw my hands up and say, Lord, I thank you for another day. And that sweet Holy Ghost would begin to move on me. Yeah. Amen. I'd start staggering through my yard like a drunk man, yeah. talking in another language. Yeah. We've got away from that. Yeah. I'm not saying you. I'm talking about as a, as a whole. Yeah. As a whole. But I believe there's getting ready to be a return to these things. It's going to have to be a restoration. We talk about the coming of the Lord. and Some people talk about the rapture and all these different things. There's got to be something to come back for. There's got to be a bride to come back for. Amen. He's not coming back for my daughter will be 12 years old this coming weekend. But he's not coming back after a 12-year-old child or a little girl. He's coming back after a bride that has made herself ready. She's got the garments on. She's been washed. She's been purified by the word of God. He's coming back for that bride. Yeah. I've got to be. We've got to be. You've got to be part of that bride tonight. Yeah. Amen. Every church age that led us up to this time might not have been the bride. The bride is the call out of the call out of the call out. Yeah. Amen. Everybody gets to go to the wedding. Everybody gets a call to the wedding. But not everybody is the bride. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel God. Not everybody's the bride. I want to be bride tonight. I want to be bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Amen. When I lay hands on somebody, I'm not satisfied anymore from my hands, but I want to feel a hand between him, his, my hand and, his, and that person I'm praying for. He said, I'll walk in you. I'll move in you. I'll be your God. You'll be my people. Yes. And you'll never be ashamed. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed of him and not are you. Amen. Not ashamed of his miracle working power. Yes. He's the same. Hebrews 13 and 8 declares yesterday. Today, right now. In 3, 10, 22. He's the same as he was when he walked on the seas of Galilee. Amen. And the shores of Galilee. And climbed the Mount of Olives and told the people what it took to really be a Christian to love your enemies to treat people right to be willing to lay down your life to bless those that despitefully use you and mistreat you men uh, sometimes my flesh I want to you know what are you doing you can't do that to me we, we got to lose that mind and there talk a lot of times it's like man how do people think that they can go get by and then you start thinking, oh, but I remember what I did yeah. last year or last month or a while back. So I see how that's possible. See? But when you look back and you say, Lord, I thank you for showing me. I was so ignorant. I was so dumb. I was so ignorant of your ways. I used to think you could fight this thing in the flesh and you can't fight it in the flesh. You can't fight the devil in the flesh. Amen. You can't cast out a devil in the flesh. The devil is a spirit. God is a spirit. God, everything God is or God ever done, and anything Satan ever was or done was an imitation of something God done. The Lord done. Jesus is what I'm talking about. It was an imitation of something Jesus done. The mark of the beast is nothing but an imitation of the seal of God upon God's people. The Holy Ghost baptism. Do you realize that? Jesus was born of a virgin. Came to this earth. Walked as a man. Lived as a man. Died as a man. Raised.
raised up himself by the spirit of God in him, raised him up out of the tomb. And the devil has done everything he can to imitate. But he can't imitate the resurrection. He can't imitate a return to the word of God. He wants to draw us away from the word of God to something else. But he can't imitate a return, a genuine restoration of the scriptures. The devil don't want you to live right. The devil don't want you to treat people right. Amen. The devil won't make you love your enemy. The devil won't make you uh, love those that despitefully use you and turn the other cheek when they hit you. But God, Jesus in us, enables us. And when he raises up a standard against that enemy, he has to flee. But in our flesh, we, I've heard people, Satan, you take your filthy hands off him and all this stuff. And I've heard and seen all this and seen people, their necks almost broke, knocked in the floor and all kind of stuff and still went homebound. Amen. We laid in North Carolina one night for two and a half hours with a lady in the floor. She was on all kind of drugs and different things and she come to the altar and wanted help. Somebody around said, she's got a down on her. And she just needed to repent. And that spirit probably would have left her. But we held, we held her, held her down, wrestled with her. She was banging her head. We said, better hold her head. And she would start uh, gargling and gagging and spitting and everything. I guess I would too. If somebody was holding me down the floor like that. <laughs> but she left. And later wound up in prison. And I thought back, if 